another edition of Mr. Nice Guy. I'm Ben Slowey, and I'm joined on this very, very frigid Monday evening by a good friend of mine um, who uh, I've had the pleasure of having on the show in the past uh, in his old band. Uh, also, we've collaborated a couple times uh, on some um, artwork. Uh, he actually made my current Mr. Nice Guy logo. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I kind of want to remake that for you. <laughs> word. He also made me a, a, a Mr. Nice Guy Presents flyer for a show coming up in January. Um, so he's an artist. He's a singer-songwriter, performs under the name Wiley Jacobs. Uh, he, his last album, Unmarked Graves, came out in uh, 2020. And, uh, yeah, he's a he's a good old River West guy, uh, f- a frequenter of Bremen, uh, with River West Goes to the Movies, his uh, movie trivia show that... I was also a contestant on. Also, no longer exists. Does not. Yeah, it's not a thing anymore. Um, Maybe someday. Yeah, but it was a ton of fun. So yeah, uh, we're gonna talk all about art, some music, and we're also just gonna catch up because it's just good to see him. So Jake Hess, good to see you, buddy. What's up, dude? How you doing? We're doing pretty good. Good. How was your day today? It's all right. Uh, worked on a gift for my mom. I'm on vacation for the next two weeks. Nice. So Good. I'm just kind of trying to slow down a little bit. Yeah. And realize that I have two weeks off. Yeah. Instead of just trying to cram everything in. Instead of just it being go time all yeah. the time. I'm not on my vacation yet. My vacation does not start until the day after Christmas, actually. I have to work the holiday. Yeah. Hotels, man. They <laughs> they, uh, they don't have a day off. But how do you plan on spending your time off of work? Uh, For the most part, uh, I am going to try my damnedest to get the album that I wrote last year when I had COVID recorded. Oh, yeah. Right on. Nice. I wrote about seven songs in five days before I was allowed back into the world Mm. and then just did not do anything with them. Damn. Yeah. It was pretty much an exercise in trying to stop doubting myself oh yeah so during those Mm -hmm. days it was just i would just start fucking around with a chord progression Mm -hmm. and as soon as it was like sounds good write lyrics and just like solidify a song Mm -hmm. tried my hardest to not critique myself whatsoever and really kind of break that Mm -hmm. because i feel like that type of thing is what kind of yeah I don't know, ruined might be a little bit <laughs> over the top, but sure. you know, you get in your head about writing music. Oh yeah. You know, you put yeah. out however many records or write however many songs and then everything has to turn into, Oh, well, you know, is this, you know, what people really want to hear? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know, is it my best work? And I sure. just wanted to get back to, I don't know, in middle school, even. Yeah. I listened to some of the stuff that, you know, my earlier bands even recorded in high school. Sure, yeah. I was a better guitar player then. Oh, I, you know, And I've been playing for almost 25 years now. Oh, wow. It's like, you just the reckless abandon you have when you, like, don't know any better mm-hmm. is definitely better for uh, creativity. Sure, when you just go into it, just sort of, like, you know, bowl out of the gate, kind of. Yeah. yeah. I guess in the, the simplest terms, I wanted to relearn having fun yeah. writing music. yeah. For one, I'm, I mean, that's dope to hear, but it's also like very, that's, it's also super valid too, because, you know, writing music or, or whatever method of creativity you're doing, you know, it, it ebbs and flows, you know, yeah. sometimes you have to kind of, it has to die out for it to come back to life again when you feel that inspiration, that motivation, that reinvention, yeah. if you will. And, it, but I mean, it sucks that it took uh, COVID having covid <laughs> yeah. to, to to do that for you but luckily i had no symptoms oh that's good so, i was gonna say you you wrote five songs with like i mean that, just the the loneliness of my own room oh there wasn't sure any, <laughs> there Damn. wasn't any other uh too bad of a problem okay with it I, I just checked the day i was i was about to go over to my parents for christmas and was like i'm gonna take this at home test and you know how they say to wait 15 minutes just to make sure? Yep. yep. When you have it, it is the darkest line that has ever existed. Oh, man, yep. As soon yeah. as it it's yeah. there. As soon as it you passes. You to wait. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The whole idea, though, of like how you want to just 
be creating all the time. Yeah. It's, I spent my entire birthday alone in the woods staring at a fire. Mm. Mm -hmm. And there is that thing of once you get a very good fire going, oh, yeah. You can allow yeah. it to get down to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. And then you can turn an ember and put a piece of wood on there and it starts back up again. Yeah. Yeah. Where I think you try as a creative just to continually throw logs on that. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. you have to let them all burn down to coal mm -hmm. to then be able to put a small piece on and start that fire again. Yeah. You, know, you can't just keep piling on wood. Right. Right. Because uh, after a while, it'll just extinguish it. Yeah. 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 And it, it where it has to be a more like, you know, strategy to yeah. how you're building this fire. I, because your, your, your birthday is what, September? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's like the optimal time to build a fire. Oh yeah, that was a good time. I think I I felt similarly with Mister Nice Guy about the the ebb and flow. Yeah, you were going at it there, dude. Hard. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck had gotten into me <laughs> in 2019. I was just having coffee with a friend a few days ago, and we had this conversation about how 2019 was just off the rails. You do a lot of creative things too. You know, you you're also. A, you're a huge movie guy. You oh. watched a shit ton of movies in the last two, three years in quarantine, you know? I think in 2020, it was somewhere around 275. Holy shit. And oh. the last two years, I think I'll maybe just break 200 this year. Wow. And last year was about the same. You keep a, a full list? Yeah, I got. A, I use Letterboxd. Oh, yeah. That's a great app. I, I think it's just, I don't know. I, I'll I'll give you that information if anybody wants sure. to follow Letterbox. <laughs> no, Letterbox is great. Yeah, it's a, a to be honest, one of my favorite apps. Yeah, even besides the social media part of it, it's just very I don't know. I, yeah, I like having just an entire list mm -hmm. of everything I've watched in the last three years, dude. Yeah, and like you can also like it's a place to put your succinct, uh, but also like sufficient thoughts on okay. every movie you watch too and you can share it with your friends and everything it's i don't use it nearly as much as i should i like making lists on there too like i've gone through either just like example or example yeah <laughs> <laughs> even through like uh just series or like entire directors uh filmographies and stuff and then just like ranking everything mm -hmm. like you know i have all of john carpenter's stuff which, oh sick you know, Dude, hell yeah! My favorite director. Yeah, has, yeah. If you've seen the oh, all the John Carpenter. Oh fuck yeah! Design. Oh that's fu oh shit! <laughs> hell yeah! Snake Plissken. Nice, good. Or, or as a friend of mine just dogged on me, who said, "I like your Captain Ron tattoo." <laughs> just the the realization that there are two movies with Kurt Russell having an eye patch. Oh wow! Well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, Actually, I watched a couple John Carpenter movies during uh, quarantine. Dude, Starman was him, right? Yeah. What a great movie. Yeah. it's uh, That is like a really fantastic movie. And all the stuff with Jeff Bridges, he like went to a coach to basically like unlearn human <laughs> movement. Yeah, like mannerisms. Yeah. Yeah. He, it, he was so good in that movie with the way he yeah. like captured those like guy from another planet who yeah. looks like a guy but is an alien like how the mannerisms were like he was yeah no, no. that one rules I, I think the thing that kind of uh that's it's weird because i think that there's two movies that john carpenter had that kind of failed because of et oh which oh, is yeah. the thing mm. and starman oh yeah sure because the thing came out right around when et came yeah, out. yeah 82 yeah and people were like Oh, another alien movie. It's like, oh, this is, this is horribly depressing. Yeah, this is like stomach wrenching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Starman came out and just gets a lot of like, uh, like an ET ripoff thing, which I kind of disagree with. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, totally different. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's a road movie. It is. And it's, at its heart, it's not really the alien part is just an addition to the road movie. Yeah, you know? that's, yeah, true that. Like, and of course, there's like you know the wholesome, charming alien part with the deer scene, which was oh, like yeah. really really sweet. Um, 
Yeah, and I you still get a sweet carpenter thing with the uh, him <laughs> going through his entire life cycle up until <laughs> the point that he is that age. Yeah, yeah. That you still get the body horror of this baby yeah. weird right. thing yeah. around on the ground. That's in like the first like right. four minutes, so you kind of forget about that. Part. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. One of my favorite parts is when they're like it's still in the beginning, and he's like still learning everything, and he's like. I can't get no satisfaction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah which you know, you know that, right? Is that because he found the disc? Oh yeah, he found the yeah. gold disc that got sent into space. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was totally unintentional. <laughs> I had a cough. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was perfectly timed as a spit. <laughs> I guess it was. Um, but then I also watched the fog. Uh, the Fog is uh, another great Carpenter great. movie too. Um, I was actually a big Dave Cronenberg kick during uh, oh, yeah, yeah. during quarantine. I think my favorite um, Cronenberg film has to be Naked Lunch. Which I haven't seen that one. Oh, you I'm re- still you still really like it? My Cronenbergs, even though yeah. I've seen like The Brood four times. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, The Fucking Brood. Also, for me, Cronenberg, my two favorite are Eastern Promises and uh, History of Violence. Oh, yeah. That's, like, how I first started watching Cronenberg. Oh, sure. Okay. And they're definitely outside of his, you know, master of horror type stuff, but mm-hmm. still just incredibly brutal movies. Yeah. I need to see... I, I think I saw History of Violence in, like, high school. I need to watch it again. Yeah. That I, one, yeah. I would say, watch it again in high school might have been not just too early for <laughs> life experience rather right. than, you know... Yeah. <laughs> I think it was like, oh, Viggo Mortensen, fuck yeah, Aragorn's in this movie, and he's like a, like living a double life, yeah. cool. But yeah, I need to watch it. I need to go back to that one. But yeah, he's in both of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Eastern Promises is gnarly. That movie's really great. Okay, sure, yeah. And then Crimes of the Future came out as of this year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you seen that? Yet? No, I haven't. No. I think uh, his son made that movie Possessor, which I really oh, liked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think his son made that movie, and his dad was like, oh, you're going to do body horror? What's up? <laughs> and, then re- and then released Crimes of the Future. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. In that case, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be building my 22, 2022 movie list soon, yeah. and that one's definitely going to be on and it. And another Vigo. Oh, and, uh, yeah, and another Vigo. Have you seen Crash? Cronenberg's uh, Crash. No. Oh, that's. I haven't. I also haven't seen the other Crash either. So. <laughs> oh yeah, the one, the one with like. Uh... Ludacris. Yeah, Ludacris. <laughs> Who's the only person I can remember being in that movie? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's that. Yeah, Ludacris and um, yeah, I don't even fucking. Oh, and Don Cheadle's in it. Sure. Um, but yeah, no Crash from '96. That's a that's a fucking deeply disturbing movie, but also great for fans of just really uh uh fringe horror yeah that's like the uh car crashes sexual gratification <laughs> yeah. through car crash yep. movie it yeah. sure is <laughs> yeah as far as highlights i want i do want to hear your highlights for movies like um that you watched this year though i i have a list oh I sure could quickly go through my top go ahead yeah want. no i'd love that actually this is like an exclusive that will come out after I post about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. Best of 2022. I guess I'll start at 10. I almost started with one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ambulance. Okay. It's uh, Michael Bay, Jake Gyllenhaal, and uh, I believe that's Yaya Abdul-Mateen. Okay, in that. sure. I hope I'm not getting that wrong. I should also preface that I've... Really, I think I've only seen one or two movies. I I wa- always watch them at the end of the oh, year. Sure. The only one I've seen uh, was Nope. That yeah, was the only I, one I. I like that movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ambulance is just nuts. Is it? Like it's a just. What's well, Michael Bay? It's like totally fuck off action movie. Michael yeah. Bay has suddenly found drones, which there's a lot of like <laughs> oh, really boy. good stuff. Oh in good. That movie. Nice. But it's like. Two people think that they're going to be able to rob this bank and it's going to change their life. And then they wind up having to steal an ambulance and are like running from the police in this sure. ambulance for the rest of the movie. Good movie to put on after a couple beers. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun movie. Good. And just, I really like fuck off action mm-hmm. and it really, there's not a lot of stakes yeah. and I, 
I like that. Hey, man, my first rated R movie was Terminator 3. <laughs> <laughs> I would rent it just to watch the car chase scene. Yeah. Yeah, I, just, I love stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nine was Top Gun Maverick. Okay. I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. If you didn't get to see it in theaters, I think that they're releasing it again. Nice. Because it didn't make enough money. Oh, oh, yeah. That's what you do if it didn't. I think it made like two point five billion dollars. <laughs> like, I, you know, as much as you, whatever you want to say about Tom Cruise, he, I'm pretty sure at least for a year saved the film industry. With oh yeah, waiting to release that movie. Sure. But again, just another kind of like stupid action movie. It's mm-hmm. propaganda and everything. But I was sitting in my seat with like my fists clenched. Oh yeah. You know, like, yeah. Uh, number eight. Nope. Which, yep. Loved it. I thought it was... Uh, I still liked Get Out the most out of yeah. Peel's movies, but I liked it... I think I liked it more than Us, and I just thought that the... For one, the fact that they filmed the night scenes during the day... I did not know that that was day for night. Wow. Yeah, in in the in the California valleys. But, they did a very good job. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was also like with that keen, subtle... Uh, Jordan Peele humor. Mm-hmm. Alien is like right above the like truck that yeah. Dan Kalui is in, and he just like locks the door. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> love that subtle humor like that. No, it was just a great take on that like genre. Even, yeah, too. yeah. And hearing stuff with him talk about how you know he he wanted to make a movie that like you wanted to see in theaters, like a big yep. kind of spectacle yeah. movie. Yeah, and, we yeah. saw it in the Oriental. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was great. I uh, I saw it at AMC out by Mayfair. And, okay, sure. Uh, they were the lights went down, and there was five minutes of darkness. <laughs> and then I had to stick around for another hour to see it in a different theater. Oh, oh shit! Okay. In that five minutes, though, I did uh, put an Instagram story up that was like, "It's very bold of Jordan Peele to just have five minutes of absolute silence at the <laughs> beginning of his movie." <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> uh, seven was Prey, the uh, okay. uh, Predator prequel. Oh, movie. sure. Okay. I thought that that was incredible. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I really liked that they had the, uh, now I'm forgetting the language that they spoke in that movie, but they had a, like a Native American dub mm-hmm. on it. Oh. You could watch on sure. Hulu. Like it only got released on Hulu, which kind of sucks, but. We're in that stage of nobody knew what, what was going to happen with the pandemic. So yeah. they made some deal that it was like, this is only coming out on Hulu. I really wish that, that would have gotten a wider release. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, six was The Northman. Okay. Which I've now seen twice, and the second time I liked it even more. I don't even think it was on my list till I watched it a second time. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah, uh, it, who was who's, who's in that one? It's uh, Alex Skarsgård, Anya Taylor-Joy, I think is how you're supposed to pronounce it. I always said Anya. Okay. Uh and apparently, like, a really specific, uh, like, Norse-accurate movie. Okay, sure. And, uh, one of my favorite directors was, it's uh, Robert Eggers. I did love The Lighthouse a lot. Yeah, I did as well. <laughs> and, yeah, it has to be him because, like, uh, Willem Dafoe is in this. And, mm-hmm. but, but visually just stunning all around. Yeah. But the second time I caught way more of the story. Okay. Because... Uh, there, I've gotten so used to watching stuff with subtitles on my TV mm. that you just, I like seeing something in the theaters. Sometimes it's like I feel like I miss yeah. parts of the yeah. plot and stuff. But then I watched it at my house and it was like, oh, there's yeah. also like a really great story. Oh, that going makes sense. On. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah, yeah. And just Alexander Skarsgård uh, is a a creature to behold. Word <laughs> is uh, something else. Sure, yeah. Uh, five, the Batman. Oh, nice. I think that might be the movie that came out this year that I saw the most. I believe I've seen it five times. Nice. Good shit. <laughs> that I've seen it for like more than half of a day. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's three hours long. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, just great. It's one of the only only Batman movies that I... I, I love anything Batman, mm. but one of the only Batman movies that I think actually captured how I feel about the character when I read the comics. Okay. I should probably watch that too, because normally I don't care for superhero movies, but when it comes to Batman, they're usually... Well, a different, a different tone and 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 um, there's a psychology there that's actually yeah. I don't know a little more than just him being super strong or whatever whatever you yeah know? yeah excuse me uh, four crimes of the future Ryan, okay uh, 
almost said Brandon Cronenberg, which is his son. It's David Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. Wild movie. Yep. Okay. Fucking, <laughs> I'm excited yeah, to see that definitely one. Definitely it. Uh, three was Bones and All. Oh yeah, I just I was just talking to yeah, somebody about that. I, I got to see that. Just yeah. recently saw that. I there is just uh, I mean Timothy Chalamet, mm-hmm. incredible yeah. actor. Yeah. And then whoever the bad guy is in this is like, oh, is he a creep? Is like, he? I, and apparently, from what I've heard other people talk about, he's in some stuff where he's kind of just like a nice guy. So, okay. Like, he is creepy Damn, in okay. this movie. Sure, sure. Uh, two was Speak No Evil, which is, I think, like an Eastern European film. I don't know mm-hmm. exactly where it was from. Uh, I Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I Okay, so I just found a, f- a, a, f- a Twitter thread yeah. where people were talking about, like, what movies did you watch that were either really fucked you up or after you watched it, were like, what the fuck did I just watch? And this movie, uh, a couple people said, actually. And I specifically, I have a list, and this was added to it on Letterboxd, that is uh, movies that make me feel like shit, but I really love. (laughs) Yeah. And this falls under that category. The, The entire movie is just very uneasy and tense, Mm. and the ending... I like had plans to do stuff that night and just like went to bed. Oh yeah, after the end of One it, of, okay, okay. I, it was just sure. like crushing. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I, I I'm a sucker for movies like that too. Um, and uh, I it might be. I think that this is a lot. Probably a lot of people's number one for this year. Maybe I'm wrong, but everything, everywhere, all at once, which I've heard great things about. Yeah. I can't wait to see that too. It's uh, incredible. Mm-hmm. I've recently made a foray into some psychedelics, but sure. And this movie really spoke to a lot of that. Okay, cool. And also, is you know this story about like family strife that is disguised as a like science fiction action kung fu movie. Oh, so, wow. Okay. Like, wow. Yeah. I uh, the first time I saw it, I actually cried through almost the entire film. Really. Wow. Like from like from like frame one, <laughs> just like yeah, that movie like really affected me deeply, mm-hmm. and and there's so much stuff going on in it. I think you can pretty much just watch it over mm. and over. Like there's a lot of stuff to soak in. I think I might start with that one then when I when I'm yeah, it's it's great and definitely like you know turn all the lights out yeah oh yeah really really dive into that movie sure yeah well thank you for sharing your list (laughs) um i hey i did you see tar i have not and i don't know if that's still at the oriental i did want to try to see that because i don't that list might change Mm with like two movies that i want to see is the other one the menu i saw that oh okay what'd you think i liked it quite a bit i thought it was funny okay Uh, yeah I my only my service industry experience is being a bartender. Sure. Yep. And I yep. went and saw it with a bunch of people who had been in the service industry in kitchen okay. situations or sure. like you know wait staff, whatever. Mm-hmm. They all like hated it. Okay. So I wonder if the fact that I had only heard stories about kitchen service sure. is why I was like, yeah, that was fun and like funny and oh, okay, and where they were like, Ugh, like it's way too on the nose, like. This was written by somebody who's never been in a like, I don't even know if that's true or anything. Sure. But it... <laughs> okay. It's an interest, hey, interesting perspective, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, well. Whereas to me, it just sounded like every story I've ever heard about <laughs> kitchens. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I've worked in the kitchen before, so I'm very curious to see what, what it entails. Um So the other night I watched a movie, actually, that I was I wanted to see if you had seen it have you seen greener grass on hulu no i actually don't think i've ever even heard of it okay it's a surreal dark comedy and it's uh it's got some snl cast members in it interesting as well as darcy Carden. um and uh it's about like these two like these these uh two like suburban like moms that are like rivals in this really like bizarre unnamed suburbia Okay. And it, it's it's hilarious. Like it is a really fucking funny movie, but it's a really there's a lot of great social commentary about how far people will fucking go to like 
be people pleasers um, or try to claim things as their own pride. Uh, yeah. I highly recommend that All one. Right. Um, that one is 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 I, I like uh, surreal movies a lot, so uh, I think you might like that and, one. And now that you mentioned uh, Darcy Carden, I think I must have heard about that on Comedy Bang Bang at some point. Okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's from like 2019. Yeah. Um, so, so Jake, last time you were here, we talked about you were here with Ahab's Ghost, yeah. uh, your old heavy metal band, and um, it's my understanding that you guys are actually not a band anymore. Yeah. Um, I don't think the pandemic helped anything. Mm-hmm. You know, we went through like three months of not practicing. We also had like released a record just at the end of 2019 and then yeah. never really got to have like a proper release sure. party yeah. or anything for it. And then, you know, three months of not practicing, kind of having trouble just getting back into practicing. Uh, just also, we had been around for 13 years. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, yeah. And I think we just got to a point where we were we were like, Let's uh, let's take a hiatus mm-hmm. and then maybe kind of like do stuff that doesn't involve us being in a band together. Sure, yeah. You know? Let's like be let's just like yeah. be friends for a while, you know. And yeah, yeah. you know, just kind of because you guys had known each other since oh, yeah. when you were kids. Yeah, we've the two uh, the three of us have been friends since grade school. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and then I just I think it kind of during that time, like even you know. No ill will to anybody, and I yeah. don't think that there really is. But yeah, it just kind of got to where it's like I don't think that we're gonna be a band anymore. Okay, which I you know I've had my times of kind of grappling with like how strange that is mm-hmm. having you know that used to be basically my identity. Yeah, is that I mean that's how I know a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, the especially now coming back into being out a lot more mm-hmm. and, and everybody's going like, so what's up with Ahab's ghost? And it's like, Oh, well, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, you no longer have a connection to me anymore. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, however you want to put it, but yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing. And, but I luckily, you know, have started being a lot more into doing visual art. So mm-hmm. there's still something that I'm yeah. doing. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. You've been killing it with the flyers lately. Hey, of course. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, but, but, you know, I mean, that, that makes sense though. I mean, you know, the band had a very long, a long run and yeah. sometimes things run their course and, you know, it obviously gave you a lot of really valuable memories, valuable yeah. friendships. What, what was your guys' last show as Ahab's Ghost? I want to say that it was, I guess, kind of fittingly at Bremen. I think it was the show that we played with Lunar Moth and uh why well, I can't I remember John Litke's noise project. Oh uh well I know he's Lost Tribes of the Moon. Yeah. Uh but I don't know I don't know what his other project is. I'm having a hard time remembering stuff today, apparently. That's okay. <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs> but Yeah, and that was another thing too, is it I this is a little more insight into things, but there was also just kind of that, like even just talking about show wise, I, there, there was that like towards the end where it would kind of be like, I don't know if I'm like really having fun doing this anymore, but then we would play a show and that would kind of give us like another, like three months of juice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 And yeah, I, I think that eventually I kind of had to realize that even beyond just like, yeah, we had been around for however long or this or that. It was a little bit like, I think I'm just kind of done, mm-hmm. you know. Yep. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's and that's okay. Yeah, um, it's, it's hard to realize that kind of stuff, and that's I mean, even with, with talking about River West Ghost of the movies. Yeah, that was there was a certain point where you know I'm the person booking the guests, I'm making the flyers, I'm writing all the games, I'm doing all this stuff, and as much as the day of would give me that boost to go mm-hmm. like, yeah, we're gonna do this for another month. It got really hard to have passion about that show, mm-hmm. having to put that much work into it. Sure, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I think COVID did a lot, of, a lot for did that for a lot of people. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense anymore, or 
we quickly realized we're all in different places in our lives, you know. Um, And that show in particular was a thing where we were getting pretty huge crowds right before the shutdown happened. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I basically had to restart trying to build that again. And it was a little bit disheartening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because I was, you know, just during a really bleak time. Yeah. You know, not everyone's going out like they used to. And um, But I did really appreciate you inviting me onto the show. Oh, that was a really fun night. Yeah. That's the... I always... any Anybody that I would invite on there, that they would go like, well, I don't really like watch movies or blah, blah. And I'd try to tell them, like, we had an episode where, holy shit, uh, Milwaukee Legends, holy shit was on. Yeah. And literally none of those people watch movies. Yeah. It, was, it was probably <laughs> the funniest I bet. fucking show of River West Coast movies that I ever had. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Dude, that was... Yeah, that oh man, that's hilarious. I remember, yeah, because it was myself, Anna D, and Joseph Huber. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, up. shout out to yeah. them. And I remember I'd already had, like been having a couple drinks, and I was like, Jake, <laughs> do sequels count? And we were like naming Steve Buscemi and uh, Chris Elliott, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, leave it to Bremen to you know bring all kinds of wonderfully weird and unique community events to bring people together and have a blast. And, you know, out of the death of River West Coast, the movie was birthed Bremson, which is oh, yes. you know, the burlesque yeah. show that I host, the burlesque variety show that I host once yeah. a month. Dude, yeah, how's that going? It's uh, actually pretty fantastic. We just had our uh, year anniversary in mm. November, and December was a uh, year and a month or whatever. Show 13. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, and it's wild that we've only been around for a year. In the last couple of months, we used to have four tables with chairs, and now we only have two tables mm-hmm. with just more chairs. And I, the way that things have been going, it looks like we might just have chairs, and maybe at a certain point that show is going to be standing. I mean, we've mm. we've been bringing in a lot of people, and we've had guests from you know California regularly. People come up from Chicago to be be on our bill you know we have sideshow acts yeah. sword swallowing oh, fire yeah. dancing fuck I yeah mean, uh, comedians in the local scene shout out to uh, Aaron Morris and Reagan I'm gonna pronounce her name again wrong as I did on that show <laughs> Reagan Nimala <laughs> okay who I'm I'll probably go watch her host the uh, Bremen open mic tonight <laughs> shout out yeah big shout out but yeah you know and we're trying this in this next year we're our resolution is to even just have more variety in acts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'd like to start maybe even having like half the show be burlesque and then the night finishes out with a band or, oh yeah, you know, just really kind of up in our game in this next year because we've had so much fun. I mean, it's literally like my favorite night of every month. Yeah. And, and uh, DJ Steb, Stebby Funfetti, Stebby, my yeah. co-host and DJ, you know, we... We yuck it up in between, <laughs> yeah. In between yeah. acts, and also obviously shout out to V Valentine, my Big co-producer on that show. Love V, who has been you know a veteran in the scene. Mm-hmm. She's been doing burlesque. I mean, not as long as I've known her because I've known her since middle school. Oh but, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it's just a confluence of really great people yeah. putting together a show that we like. You know, really want to be completely inclusive. Drag trans performers. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone is allowed there, and you have my big burly ass as the host. So if anybody gets out of line, they can talk to the bearded dude in fishnets and see what's up. You know, like we're we're here to create a community and a safe space and have a lot of fun once a month. And I, yeah. it's I love it deeply. It's a, a really, really, really fun show. Fuck yeah, that's fucking dope, <laughs> dude. That's great, Noah. Yeah. Uh, don't make Wiley Jacobs come and talk to you, uh, uh, Mister Lucifer. Mister, that's that, that's your that's alien. my moniker for Bremson. Okay, don't you, make don't make Mister Lucifer yeah, come talk to you. And call me Lucy for short. <laughs> and I, I really I know that it's a cliche thing to say, but the, the the performers that we have that come back, you know, every month or every other month. I mean, we've we've created a family. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like. Every month is like getting to see very old friends and yeah. having like a really great get together for yeah. four yeah. or five hours. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's yeah, it's precious, dude. Yeah, it's a it's a very fun night, 
and I, I asked this question to somebody the other day is is this what happens with an aging uh, musician and artist is that you just stop playing in bands and you start emceeing events? <laughs> <laughs> Even if it is, you're still developing a character out of it. Oh, sure. You know, um, what, what, what's going to be your, uh, your next show? Uh, this coming January. Um, Second and, Saturday. Yeah, that's the, I want to say the 12th. Hmm. But we also do it. It's going to be a birthday. Oh, the fourteenth. Fourteenth. Yeah. 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 It's going to be a uh, birthday party, and I want to get this performer's name right. Who's going to be coming in from out of town? V has worked with them before. Okay. And uh, Barbie Monroe. Okay. Right on. And it's going to be a uh, partially their birthday party and fun. Bringing back a couple of. Uh, Kind of newbie-ish performers, too. Sweet. Uh, Maddie Inferno, who was on our one-year show, who kind of blew a lot of people away. It was her first time doing, you know, burlesque. Okay, and yeah. Really, really, really gave it to the crowd, you know? Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, and I, I'm not sure of the exact lineup yet, but every month is just something to look forward to. It, I mean, it... I know it's a show that I produce and am a part yeah. of, but like it is my favorite night, like every yeah. Month. No, that's how I get with my Mister Nice Guy present yeah. shows at Cactus Club. Like it's just fucking stoked to see not only all the performers, but also how the performers form a cohesive evening mm-hmm. of just joy, talent, and fun. You know, and yeah, there's nothing that can replace that. So uh, yeah, you know, it's a party and everyone's invited as long as yeah. you're not a dick. I think this is a good segue into talking about your artwork, Jake. Because, hey, yeah. um, so yeah, you. I know you do a lot of, um, uh, you know, you do a lot of flyers. Yeah. You also do a lot of, you know, your own stuff. Uh, I know you did a self portrait recently yeah. where you're like have like the what was it yeah, like the that was uh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it was like something shooting out of your head with like you, but you looked like a demon or something. Yeah, I, I it, it kind of was. I again, that was I did that on my birthday where I was sitting. Okay, I, yeah. I went on a camping trip by myself for two days mm, mm. up at High Cliff State Park. Love, dude. Shout out, love High yeah, Cliff, High dude. Cliff, I was Cliff is super, super fucking dope. I was there in September. Yeah, and that was oh fucking really beautiful. Area. Yeah, yeah, Lake Winnebago. Um, did some stuff that helped enhance my experience and uh there you go i did i hadn't i hadn't put pencil to paper in a long time because i've been doing just mostly you know digital art Mm -hmm. and outside of that anything that wasn't digital i was painting Mm -hmm. so it was like hadn't done that in a while and i pretty much just like three hours with pencil to paper did that uh self-portrait which kind of was a self-portrait of where i was sitting at the time Mm -hmm. but kind of just let out at like I don't know, like it kind of looked like my head was blown out, and yeah. that I was even maybe I was maybe a tree. Yeah, like I, you know, yeah, it, yeah. But it, as much as I might not be able to explain that whole thing, it was kind of just like eh, it's just like how I was fucking feeling at the moment. Yeah, and I think some people were a little bit taken aback by that drawing. No, but I like that. No, but that's dude, that's great though that you like putting pencil to paper like a self-perception that might not even have to be it's it's obviously not literal it's it can be a conceptual yeah, thing too of course it, it certainly was just a an exercise in you know listening to myself yeah yeah and i i think i might try to make that a kind of a tradition is to really like on my birthday just take time out to just really dive into myself in the mm-hmm. last year and yeah. do a self portrait. That sounds great. Yeah. yeah, and that'll be great to if you if you do that. Like it'd be dope to see how it yeah. you know, evolves over time and see how you're you're growing, how you're changing. Yeah. Um, how so? As far as art goes, so have you like? Did you draw like as a kid? Like have you yeah, always been uh, kind of incessantly? Okay. Uh, my my aunt uh, Don Michaels, who is incredible artist herself mm-hmm. uh it's michael's with a z i believe you can find her on oh, instagram word. sure uh very kind of inspired by her yeah it's yeah. uh, been so much just going to like her house as a kid and stuff and like just all the art that she would have and i it just 
but you know, just I mean, incessantly in the fact that like drawing like comic characters that I came up with or yeah. like just stuff. But I it always was a thing, and then I think that once I picked up guitar around eleven, that kind of fell off. Mm-hmm. I still mm-hmm. was always really into like trying to make like logos for the bands that I was in and like do sure. stuff yeah. like that. But I want to say it was probably two years. I know that's weird that we always have to reference the fucking pandemic, but it might have been like two years before the pandemic. I kind of started to go like, I want to draw some faces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then just started to get back into doing flyers. Yeah. Yeah. And then when, once the pandemic happened, there was a shutdown. I uh, purchased online just like a bunch of painting supplies and just started painting with acrylic. Mm -hmm. And then I have like, really got into painting yeah like it's, yeah and that's another one where it's like i i probably have like 25 paintings that i did in the last like couple of years and then it got to a point where it's kind of like i put a little bit too much wood on the fire you know? yeah like, yeah 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 and i kind of had to step back and i'm i'm looking forward to get back in back getting back into that I, I want to try out oil painting because I've, oh, yeah. I've never done that and it freaks the fuck out of me. <laughs> yeah. I, I know that you can get oil paints that already have the stuff inside of them. You don't have to worry about, you know, killing yourself in your small River West apartment with mm. all the formaldehyde. Mm-hmm. And right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. You know, I, I just, and I, you know. I don't know if you, I wanted to wait for you to ask the question, but I almost feel like this is a good segue into why I hate artificial yeah, intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. So, so much. this was a topic that we discussed discussing, uh, yeah. when we, uh, planned to do this episode. Um, yeah. So AI art, and, obviously a huge, it's been a huge trend. I mean, it was really big like two weeks ago. And then as everything does, people move on to something else a week later, but it was a big conversation, and I would love yeah. to hear your thoughts. And I, I think me talking about the kind of like putting too much wood in the fire, and now I want to step back and kind of get a little more inspiration and go back into it. The I'll, the the flat way to say this is, I don't even mean just the self portrait stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean the like when people were using it to give prompts, and then it would give like a landscape. Oh yeah, or yeah. something. It makes me sick to look at it. Mm -hmm. It looks like something trying to imitate being human or even more so trying to understand what it's like to be a human. Sure. And it kind of makes me sick to my Mm -hmm. stomach. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And some of that is with the portrait stuff is a little bit of like uncanny valley type shit. Mm Mm-hmm. But I just, I see that stuff and the idea that people, and I don't know, whatever, people get to express themselves in whatever way they want, but that people will are fine with just like typing a sentence into something and then whatever that thing gives them is their expression. Sure, yeah. I don't really buy that. Yeah. And I also don't buy the fact that like when I put a brush or a pencil or a pen to paper the the soul that leaks mm-hmm. out of me, yeah. the anger, the longing, yeah. the happiness, the like the just yearning yeah. for any type of emotion yep. that I have like thrown on to and I my art is probably shit, but the the emotion and my soul that I put onto a piece of paper yeah. can never be imitated or replicated. Yeah. By a machine. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, I appreciate you sharing and saying that because you're right. I mean, at the end of the day, AI art is, like you said, it's just, it's calculating the art rather than manually expressing it as artists do and have been meant to. And even if folks are playing or playing with or having fun with AI art. Like I get it. It's a trend, but like, it's just a reminder that you, you gotta, if, if you want to do that, you got to support local arts art yeah. too, you know, and you gotta, you know, invest in your artist friends in local artists in Milwaukee. There's so many fucking talented people out here, you know? So it's like, yeah. you, you, you like there are so many people you can commission. There are so many people you can, you know, 
link up with or, or talk to or, or uh, work on something with um, that can provide a very enriching experience with like by themselves. And I think that, you know, it's, it's just another, it's another thing of like technology co-opting creativity and it yeah. fucking sucks. It's everywhere. Like you said, the gratification, the fulfillment, the, the, the catharsis, whether it's abstract or it's direct, mm-hmm. um, whatever kind of art it is, nothing replaces the real authentic thing. So, yeah. you know, and that, to point it to more of a direct thing, uh, last year I had the opportunity to, what well, opportunity I paid to go fucking go there. So <laughs> I made my own opportunity. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But I forget what place it was in Illinois, but they had the most collected works of Frida Kahlo. Okay. And okay. Sure. I'll tell you that there is never going to be a thing that a fucking computer makes that's mm-hmm. going to make me cry the way that I did looking at those pieces oh, yeah. in the flesh. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I don't know, like, aside from the fact that, you know, they're fucking stealing art from people in order to make all this stuff, I, all that stuff is fucking horrible, too. I just, again, it kind of makes me sick to think that, like, any of this art that is being made through an algorithm has any actual soul to it. Mm-hmm. It's the only thing, like, recently that I've gone, like, maybe I am a spiritual person, even though I align as a s- Satanist. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I, it, the introduction of this art has at, started to make me realize that, like, the human soul is an actual thing that exists. Yeah, yeah. Because there is stuff that you can look at, even digital art that is made by humans. Oh, yeah. That is amazing, profoundly yeah. touching. Yeah. And whenever I have looked at anything that is made by an AI... It looks like a facsimile of a facsimile, and it, like, I, I'm i not using hyperbole, like, makes me feel kind of ill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's, like, I don't know, it's strange, but mm-hmm. I just, in general, it's just, support art. Yeah. You know, I, there was a thing going around just about that, like, in, in general, it, you know, you... Everyone takes art so much for granted. Mm-hmm. Everything would be mm-hmm. so much more bland and just almost dire yeah. without graphic design or even just somebody who could make a PowerPoint slide look symmetrical. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you're, <laughs> yeah. everything is art. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah. it's worth protecting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got into personal photography. Uh, yeah, I've seen some of your stuff. Yeah, 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 like during during quarantine, and I mean, I've always loved taking pictures, um, but I think especially, I got really into the taking pictures of you know when where people aren't the subject. Yeah. You know, I, I got into just a lot of like whether it's nature or also it's also a favorite of mine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> whether it's nature or it's 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 the environment or it's buildings or it's been hitting a lot of tourist and roadside attractions this year and visiting all kinds of wonky attractions um sculpture parks stuff like that yeah really cool wisconsin's got a lot of it taking the pictures by themselves i just took some last night on my walk home from work it was a really really fucking cold night last night and i was walking home and uh, I just, I don't know, I felt uh, I had a bit of a, an aesthetic kick last night. So just taking pictures, walking around um, between work and here in River West. Taking the pictures is, is exciting enough when you get like a really cool shot at a cool angle of like a building against the sky or something like that. But then I get extra excited to edit them. When I get home and I get to throw, like, mess with the contrast a little bit, I get to mess with the the brilliance, the definition, the vibrance, whatever the whatever the the features are, and I just it's so gratifying yeah. to be, you know have that like those evocative tools at your disposal to make art yourself, like in my case with personal photography to 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 to, to represent like I don't know what mood I was in that day or what I'm thinking about or what, you know, wonky 
surreal place that I'm visiting that I think would be is just cool to uh, uh, that that represents authenticity in in like where it's situated, you know, because we're in an increasingly corporatized landscape. That's why I like roadside attractions because it represents like something that's special or sticks out or is authentic about a place in a place that is becoming increasingly prone to that corporate influence and placelessness and sharing them into sharing them with people that I don't know, they might connect with, you know, I think you might've unlocked another thing for me Mm. is the idea that human art never has to end. Yeah. There are, there are paintings that I will pull out again and, do new things to them. Sure. Or like yeah, you took, yeah. took those photos and you may have edited them, but you might also like go back through them and go like, yeah, I want to, the, I think that's one of the things that makes me not, or have, I just have such a strong negativity towards AI art mm-hmm. is that like, that's just it. Yeah. Yeah. This is the end. This is the end. Right. There's not like, it's like an epitome of what they call, you know how that whole movement of corporate minimalism, yeah, it's the yeah. epitomization of yeah. that. If, or if, fast fashion. Yeah, you know, that like, too. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I could go on, on and on and on about how much I like, just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. disagree with. And it, you know, like, sure, some of it fucking looks kind of cool. I just fundamentally, like, cannot support that at all Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) like yeah it goes against every fiber yeah because you know what goes into to drawing or painting something you know sometimes it takes months sometimes it takes a year to finish a painting Mm -hmm. you know like that you can have this art that gets developed in a matter of seconds it just seems uh like it it gives me goosebumps. Yeah, no, it's it's scary to think about what that could mean for like, what if we're thinking about music? Yeah, and so what if or music becomes generated by AI eventually? Yeah, like that's 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 morbidly disturbing. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think that I think that in the yeah. end we win out though. There will always be something missing. Yeah, from that there will always be a void yeah. in those pictures or videos or music or there will I've even heard it there is there is music that gets like developed that it's like you can tell that this was just kind of created to fill some void mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it is there's yeah. no empathy in it yeah or yeah. no no any sort of emotion yeah there's like you said there's no soul yeah I did want to talk about your uh, record. Well, you you did, you did actually mention that uh, when we were talking about like um, putting something out, like putting art out, uh, and then returning to it later to to add something to it or or sure. to revisit it. Um, before we started recording, yeah. you actually mentioned uh, the Wiley Jacobs record that you dropped in 2020. Yeah. Um, and how you're thinking about revisiting it. Um, yeah. So. That, uh, that is Because at the time, I remember like recording it and listening to it and going like, yeah, this is like how I feel right now. And it sounds like how I feel I wanted it to kind of have. Because, I don't know, you know, I played a bunch of shows in dive bars. Yeah. And yeah. like, it kind of had that just like somebody recording it over in the corner sound to it. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of years since then, I've listened to it kind of recently and was like, and you know, this is my opinion about my own art, but it was like, this sounds absolutely like shit. <laughs> <laughs> and with wanting, you know, starting to record this new record, I was like, I could just re-record all those songs. Sure. You know, it'd, it'd probably be nicer to have like maybe some cleaner copies of those tunes. Uh, but yeah, again, that even that kind of a thing, just like, Going back to old recordings and uh, like remastering them or even remixing them or just re recording them all together. I mean, that's why when people talk about how, oh, you know, like DJs just use samples or like hip hop, a lot of, I mean, now there's a lot more actual just production on hip hop, but 
you know, that like a lot of, oh, they were just taking stuff from old right. No, it's, it's taking in the art form that came before you and re introducing your influences mm -hmm. in a different style. I mean, it's, it's all val like that is valid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and to have your own thoughts about, things that you did before and you want to change certain things about them or even uh, to be completely honest just i can just take that record off Bandcamp. <laughs> you know like sure it doesn't doesn't need to be anything i can just i can you can rework whatever you want art is completely fluid yeah and yeah. the evolution like your favorite band doesn't suck now they just are doing different stuff that yeah. you don't enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, yeah. Which is a weird cop out for no reason for me, <laughs> but like, you know, I'm try I guess I'm just trying yeah. to make that point that like, you know, everyone grows and no one has to grow at the same pace. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and art, like you, I think the way you put it well with it, art being a fluid experience and yeah. it's, it's art is, I mean, it's supposed to be interactive. Like, by default, it's you putting ideas into something that can be relatable to mm -hmm. others, right? That also means that you can mold it or repurpose it yeah. uh, to your liking um, over time. Um, so, so Unmarked Graves, um, your album... Uh, I know it, it took you a while to, to, to fully complete the thing. Um, so, like, do you want to talk a little bit about, like, the songs that are on there and, like, I guess the way you arranged them and whatnot? Yeah, that that record was maybe arranged a little bit more along the lines of uh, just, uh, like, pacing of each song. Sure, yeah. I don't think that there's necessarily, like, a some sort of story sure, or anything, yeah, but... Yeah. You know, you start out with a song that's kind of fast, mm -hmm. go to a mid-tempo, do a ballad, good, you know, like, for anybody who's written music and put out records, like, there, there is a weirdish formula to how you just, like, want to have an up and down of a record with tempo, mm -hmm. you know, you... Now, at the same time, I mean, I'm wearing a Skeleton Witch shirt, and I, <laughs> I think that the last record they released, uh with their former singer that album never lets up and I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to release something that's, you know, a rock and roll record or just a acoustic record, you know, you want a little bit of a up tempo thing to begin with and then yeah. you kind of go down a little bit, come back up to up tempo, that, that type of stuff. Uh, there's some songs on that record that are like pretty personal, but I, uh, I think up until recently, I'm, I'm still so, even even though Wiley Jacobs has now been around for five, maybe even like seven years, sure, yeah, I've like always felt like an imposter in that space. Sure, it's like I've just been in rock and roll and like metal and punk bands my entire life. So starting to do like solo acoustic stuff, it, there was a little bit of like, yeah, that some of that stuff is personal, but a lot of it is maybe just like. <laughs> I guess this is what I'm trying to do. Sure, <laughs> like, <laughs> sure. Yeah, different flavor of Jake. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, navigating that format. Yeah, and I think that's why, you know, as I earlier was saying, like, this n new record that I'm recording now was very much like trying to break away from, like, everything that I knew mm -hmm. and just really put actual emotion and experience into one thing without any kind of outside influence on that sure was it kind of just like a collection of songs you had written in that 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 format yeah i had, i had released a demo initially that had i think four songs on it and uh i think there's like two songs from that that are on on mark graves mm -hmm. um but it was i you know i was when i first started doing that i was playing shows like all the time yeah you know and almost at a certain point had to kind of cut back on shows just because it's like i couldn't even like write anything new because i was like playing sometimes even two shows a week mm. no, and yeah. i mean i wasn't like on the road but just you know anytime anybody was like i got the show and it's like yeah play it 
Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you play the same set however many times, and then you're, like, not actually writing any new music. It's like, <laughs> maybe I should stop playing a little bit. Sure. Uh, but, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a, just collections of songs. I mean, it's it, especially with taking the couple of songs from that demo, it's almost just kind of a, a bit of a retrospective of just, like, the entirety of that because also even at that time i think since i released that in 2020 i have maybe played one show as wiley jacobs Mm, mm. i still haven't really gotten back out performing under that name it might honestly turn into just a moniker for recording and releasing music oh sure yeah i'd love to hear more about like the new stuff you've been recording yeah um a lot of it started, uh, I mean, obviously, like, most of it was just when I had uh, COVID. Mm-hmm. But there's a couple, uh, they'll probably be maybe, I think I wrote six or seven songs while I was inside for that. But over the last year, there has just been a couple of times where I, like, close the bar as and I'm working there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then I'm, you know, walking home and have just kind of, like, started singing something and then I'll get home and I will put chords to that yeah and basically record like a rough track of a song sure yeah and again just trying to like really just speak to inspiration rather than trying to like write songs sure yeah uh and that but yeah the songs that I did write I did find just really putting a lot more like personal stuff I mean Again, talking that whole kind of feeling like an imposter in some ways. Mm -hmm. There's like several songs on there that kind of speak to that. There is just some shit that's just fucking whatever. I wrote lyrics in five minutes for yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Had thought a chorus sounded all right and sure, but you know, it it just I it's I almost want to say that there isn't that much to talk about it because I'm so much trying to just like write yeah and not think about it yeah yeah now some of it i since i wrote it i do come back and look at it and go like do i want to release this because this <laughs> seems like really personal sure yeah and and by that i kind of mean that like for the most part i'm sure you know me as like a pretty cheery guy there's some like very depressing personal shit that I've sure. written for this record. Mm-hmm. And I kind of go like, yeah, I should just record it and release it. You know, because again, everybody gets to interpret art in different ways. And maybe me thinking that this is too personal or something might be something that somebody else needs to hear. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 I'm in a weird, just in a weird spot where like I have enough stuff going on where I don't let a lot of things define me anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a little easier to just, it's starting to become a little easier to create music and art without wanting to do it for anybody but myself. Yeah. 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 And that includes possibly nobody ever sees it or hears it or the fact that i can just release stuff and go i could really i could give a fuck if you like this right yeah yeah of you course know? yeah yeah which <laughs> hopefully totally. that isn't the point that we... <laughs> no no <laughs> i mean no <laughs> that isn't the point that we end on because i could give a fuck if you like this that should be on my tombstone. Oh, I could give a fuck if you like this. I know what you're saying, though. You, you like you, you, you're, you're, you know, you've been, you've been occupying this like singer songwriter space where you know, you like you said before, you're trying not to let outside influence dictate how you navigate that space, and instead you're just riding with like just kind of what occurs to you, yeah. what might be. Like you said, uh, you know, might be profoundly personal or it might be something that, you know, you came up with in a couple minutes, Mm -hmm. but it's still, but that, that speaks to the vast spectrum of like, uh, I guess the, the, like the, the feelings and emotions that, um, your writing speaks from, which is 
shows that you know you're you're finding the versatility with within yourself of like what's kind of I guess inspiring you. Yeah, and I guess not to dumb that down a little bit because what you said really is correct, but there is also just a like I'm also just growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that. Yeah, just I that I don't think I even need to say much more. Yeah, than yeah, it, yeah. It is just. Yeah, I you know I I really am just doing shit for myself mm-hmm. these days. Yeah, which is fucking dope. Yeah. Um. Um. That said, I mean, I mean, I know you said that like you you you've only played like one show as just you as Wiley Jacobs in the last couple of years here. So like in as far as like 2023 goes, like musically, what do you feel like is in store for you? Well, I definitely this I want to get this record done. Um I I also I recently got a MIDI controller with a keyboard mm. and I want to get like a looping station, nice. maybe try to start to uh kind of fucking rip off John Carpenter just make like weird kind of soundtracky yeah. vibe music yeah yeah but also like I kind of want to do that again where I just take a certain amount of days and go like you have to write this amount of music mm-hmm. and it just do it and release it mm-hmm. I you know there's also a part of me that kind of like after I release this record wants to just like not do music for a year yeah but then I'll like you know there's been a uh, recently like a ton of artists that I've found that are in the kind of folk blues country space. A lot of incredible like female artists mm, sure. that I like have been listening to and I go like, all right, I guess I'll fucking keep playing music. <laughs> like, you know, you just have those things that like inspire you suddenly yeah. where uh, two days before that I was going like, maybe after I record this record, I'm going to like not do any music yeah and then somebody does something where you're like uh oh, i have to play yeah i forgot how much i love music yeah <laughs> yeah like fucking a that just like lit a fire under my ass yeah yeah, yeah. that's i don't know if you've heard sierra farrell and uh i want to i forget her uh sabine and i forget her last name but sierra farrell is definitely one that i have just been absolutely loving here. Let's okay, see. sure. See if I can find it. Sure, yeah, yeah. Sorry that if I'm being unconventional. Oh, not, not at uh, all. Sabine McCalla is another, that's M-C-C-A-L-L-A. I, I, but uh, it's, I think it's called Western as Fuck. It's an Instagram thing. Okay. They seem to just put up like just tons of clips, like small, short clips of artists that do videos for them that I think you can find on YouTube and stuff. But man, I just like kind of, suddenly got this like maybe 10 like country folk artists in my you know list that suddenly was just like super inspiring to mm-hmm. me yeah yeah i was like man i you know as as much as i would love to just like forget that i own guitars yeah i guess i just i guess i just have to keep playing <laughs> <laughs> you get reminded of like just the sheer potency yeah. Of, you know, what, like, how talented others are and how that can just inspire you to yeah. keep seeing what you can do. People who are creative will be like, well, I'm not fucking getting anything done. And it's like, sometimes you have to feed the, you know, mm-hmm. if you want to sit around for a day and just listen to records, yeah. you're feeding something. Exactly. You know, that's a win. You know, and yeah. that's even, I'm dabbling into over the years writing scripts yeah screenplays i think i've seen you post a little bit about it or even just writing in general that's another thing i've been getting a little more into even like not even short stories but just kind of like i wrote for 45 minutes Mm -hmm. yeah just off of nothing but you know the days that i don't work on those screenplays and i wind up watching two movies well that also like feeds oh, yeah. writing screenplay of course like, yeah going to shows and shit and like blah, like yeah i don't know it's all it's all a giant circle i relate know? to and, that yeah, yeah it, it, there is a certain uh feed and release mm-hmm. you know i mean it's it yeah it, 
everything nurtures everything. I don't know. Yeah. I just... <laughs> no, I, you, you're, you're right. It's everything nurtures everything is a pretty good um, mantra because uh, I, I try to look at everything the same way. Yeah. Whether I'm watching, you know, I'm watching my end of the year 2022, like all the movies I got to watch that came out. Um, same with records. Same with going to see shows. Same, like even if it's even if I'm just watching a couple episodes of Letter Kenny at work, I mean that's still that's can still be a very meaningful experience. Or then to even like then getting to like share that shit with other people. Yeah, yeah. That's like a whole like. Uh, I think that was a couple maybe 2021 in the winter. I got to show my friend John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh, for the yeah. first oh time man! Ever. Oh geez! And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I can't believe I could just show you this movie for like, the first fucking oh, time. Oh yeah, fucking you know, like that yeah. type of like. And again, it fuels everything. Like yeah. you're, you have friends who enjoy your passion and will then like watch something with you, and suddenly mm-hmm. maybe that's a passion for them. Yeah. And I. All in all, in the end of all this is that. Uh, really just like i fucking like be good to each other yeah like i it's it's so nice being like good yeah (laughs) and just being like accepting of people Mm -hmm. and nourishing love exactly yeah and i you know this maybe this whole thing got more philosophical than i ever expected it to but like really like love fucking prevails yeah and Art is love, and I think that that's really the baseline of what I've been trying to say. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, like, life is all about feeling things and expressing. It's about feeling and expression and also, and and that gets enriched by the collective, right? Yeah. Or if you don't feel that you have a creative bone in your body, if your nephew or something does, buy them all the fucking art shit. Yeah, know, like promote, like just lift up anybody who wants to make art. Yeah, even if you just want to literally like learn more, educate yourself more on topics. Yeah, uh, on, read the book. Yeah, read, <laughs> watch YouTube. Yeah, so like, dude, all the YouTube rabbit holes I've gone on this year. Yeah, um, and I appreciate you coming on the show to talk about art, music movies and just also sort of the philosophy behind like what it means what what all of those things mean um collectively so i'm glad to be here yeah you bet jake dude. it's been real yeah this is fun dude yeah, as bill and ted say be excellent to each other be fucking excellent um so yeah i'll, I'll be tagging jake's uh art page on instagram jwh underscore Art and design. You, I know you're not taking commissions. Um, yeah, commissions are real selecty, but I'm definitely not for like probably the next two months sure. Uh, for sure. Uh, you can also still check out the last Ahab's Ghost record, Curse, it's mm-hmm. still on Spotify. Uh, Wiley Jacobs at dot bandcamp dot com. Uh, Bremson is yep. uh, on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Go like that if you want. Come yep. to one of those shows. It's a monthly show. At Bremen Cafe. I, th- I, I think that that's it. Um, yeah, well, I'll be tagging all of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, But yeah, uh, also just good to have you back on the show. Dude, really nice talking with you. Yeah. Always a good, like, if you think that this was a good talk, this is almost every time that me and Ben talk, this is fucking the, yeah, this we, is the good we, shit. Yeah, we, <laughs> always, we always have, like, oh, dude, like, have you seen this fucking movie? Or, like. It's, it's always wonderful <laughs> talking to you. Yeah, you too, dude. Um, right on well be good to each other keep making cool shit um, fuck the system life's short thanks for watching Mr. Nice Guy we'll, we'll see you next time